Hi, I'm Ben and I'm the CTO here at BIM Object. And today in this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'll be demonstrating the Stow facade cladding system for Graphisoft's Archicad. The cladding system is available for free of charge and download via bimobject.com. It can be accessed directly via our app, as you're seeing here now, and if you search after the manufacturer Stow. We have two different systems that we'll be demonstrating today. We have the Ventec and the Vario D systems. We have some materials and textures. We have the full library and we have wall definitions as well, which can be accessed via the attribute manager. The facade cladding system from Stow is available for ArchiCAD's versions 15 through 17. Today I'll be demonstrating in ArchiCAD 16, but it is exactly the same working method in the other two versions. So this is not a freestanding object. This is an object that's directly connected to the design and the wall accessory tools. What I'm demonstrating here is the materials and the composites for ArchiCAD, which are available in the project file. And again, they can be accessed and entered into a existing project or a new project via the attribute manager. So by simply selecting the require walls that you would like to clad, as I'm demonstrating here now in the 2D window. The actual placement is only doable in the 2D window, it's not doable in the 3D window. So under the design menu, design extras, accessories, tools, and wall accessories, you will find the stow object. So as I mentioned earlier, we have two different systems, the Vario D system and the Ventec system, which I'll be demonstrating first of all. Now depending on which system you choose. So there's three different framing systems within the ve the Ventec system. We have the vertical aluminium frames, we have the horizontal steel frames and the vertical timber frames. Depending on what system you're using that determines the thickness of the insulation. So in this instance I'm using the horizontal steel frames. Now if I were to change this to the vertical aluminium frames you'll now see that we have some different settings and the insulation thickness goes all the way up to 300 millimeters. The cladding thickness is a fixed constant, so it's 18 millimeters all the time, and the airflow thickness can be changed accordingly. These settings here, the table settings, uh, reset raster and table gaps, I'll come back to in a moment. So if we continue on here, as you can see here, we have the other, the other two systems here as well. Again, I'll come back and describe these settings in a moment. So we have the surface settings as well. And again, you can access these materials via the file that you will find on the portal. So we have 2D and 3D settings as well. So once you've set everything and you're happy with those settings, you just simply click on OK and then click on the ArchiCAD plan on the side of the wall that you would like the facade cladding to be on. So in this case, it's on the outside. So as you can see here, we're showing a full level of detail. We're showing all of the, the rendering, the rendering boards, that the, the boards that the rendering actually is fixed to. We're showing the, the frames. In this case, it's the aluminium T frames and the insulation. So I've gone ahead and set out the cladding for the whole building here. And what I'd like to do now is actually go in and show some of the different settings and editing tools that we have available in this particular tool. So if we just go ahead and click on these two facades, what I'd like to do now is actually turn off the cladding system and the insulation systems. So what you'll see now when I click on OK here is that the frames aren't actually lining up. So we've done this in a way that you can optimize the way that the facade system works. So of course this wouldn't work in a real life project. So we need to be able to go and make these line up so we can get out the optimizations. So what you need to do is from the view mode change to edit structure and what you'll see here now is you'll see some editing hotspots so all of these purple hotspots in ArchiCAD are actually intelligent hotspots so that means that we can edit and move each individual frame or we can do it on a global basis as well. So as you saw earlier in the settings dialog we have something called raster. Now this is what we're referring to it's actually our grid system so this can be reset, which I'll demonstrate just in a moment. So we have a circle here that you can see in this particular object. What that actually does, that actually gives you the ability to move 
the origin of that particular framing system. So what I'd like to do is get these two origins lining up with each other. So if I just click on this and drag it across to the other origin and click OK. So what you can see here now uh, instantly with the lines is that the lines are lining up. So if we go back to our view mode and click OK, you'll now see that the framing system is actually lining up and it's been optimized uh, for a real life building as you can see here. And this also reflects in the scheduling. So everything that we're doing is live, so it's all updated automatically in our schedules as well. So if we just go and put the insulation on here and show the insulation in the 3D window as well. So you have the ability to change the materials of the insulation uh, if you'd like to do some nice high-end visualizations of this particular system. As you saw earlier in the dialog setting, we have settings for the window sills. There's two ways that you can do this. We can do this either interactively, which I'll come back to in just a moment, or we can do it via the dialog as well, via the graphical user interface. So you see here under windows, window and door sills, we have seal depths and we have I edge insulation thicknesses as well. So if I enter a value of 250 millimeters and take OK, what you'll see now is that we have the seal all filled out with the cladding system as well. And again, this is optimized. So once you've done this uh, and right, rerun the schedules, everything will be updated accordingly. We can even do this graphically in the 3D window via an intelligent 3D hotspot. If you simply initialize that and snap on the seal of the window, it will also have the same effect as if you were doing it via the dialog box. So very easy and very interactive. So what I'd like to do now is just go in and show some of the other framing systems as well. So if we go back to our edit geometry and change this to the horizontal steel frames. Sorry, before I do that, what I'd like to demonstrate is the, uh, the reset raster functionality. So as I mentioned earlier, the individual framing elements are editable on an individual basis uh, or on a global basis. So what I'm demonstrating here is the individual basis so we can move these around. And in some instances, it may sort of get out of control and you may know, not, not know what's really sort of up and down. So what I'd like to do now is just go in and quickly demonstrate the reset raster functionality. So if I click this, and then take OK, what it will do is it will set the framing system back to its original state, which again is uh, very intuitive and makes it very easy to go back to your original design. So if I just go back and turn the framing on here. So we have one more setting and that's the edit frame setting that can be found in the graphical interface. There's three different options. There's one where you can turn it off, so you may not need to have as many frames as we have here. All of the center to center distances that you see here are according to the STO constraints. In corner frames, you may need to have, or you need to have L frames. So this is also changeable interactively. So again, they're the three settings. We have the default T frame. The frames can be turned off individually or on a global basis, and they can be turned into L frames as well. So what I'd like to show now is the different insulation thicknesses. So as you can see here, we have it set to 150. If we change this to 300, what you're seeing now is actually the wall fastening system is the part that changes. So the bracket that, that's f fastened to the wall is the part that changed. The T is a constant, so the T depth never changes. So if we go back and change that back to 150, what you'll see is the actual fastening frame changing. So if we just go and turn on the insulation here and go back and change that to 300, you'll see that the insulation will also update accordingly. So if we just go back and change that to 300 millimeters. Again, what you're seeing is that the actual wall fastening system is the part that's changing and not the T frame. And the insulation is updating accordi accordingly. So if we just change that back to a 150 and click OK.
and we can see everything's lining up nicely here now. So what I'd like to do now is show the different framing systems. So in this instance, I'll be demonstrating the horizontal steel system. So as you can see here, because we've chosen the steel framing, there's only three different insulation alternatives. No insulation, 30 millimeters or 50 millimeters. We have the different board types. We have the echo board or the wind board, or we can have that turned off as well. There's two different thicknesses regarding the render. There's an 8mm and 10mm rendering thickness. So if we just go ahead and click OK. So what you're see, seeing here now is the horizontal steel framing with the echo board in the background. Uh, I, ha I don't have the insulation turned on here at the moment so that's why it looks like it's floating in the air. It's just because that we've turned the 3D representation off. So again if we change this to the steel profile and go back and just check our settings everything's okay there and if we change the material here so as you can see we have full accessibility to the material changes as well and you can see here that the corners are being handled by the object as well and all of the different cuts between the windows and around the windows so again this is optimized so you can get out nice schedule said schedules and lists and send these away to your local stow reseller so they can help you with um, with your pricing. And if we just go ahead and turn on the insulation here. So if we turn that off first and just have a look, as you can see now that's actually sitting hard up against the echo board. And if we just select that, go back to the 50 millimeters and just go ahead and turn on the insulation in the 3D window. So that was the horizontal steel framing system. We have one more system in the ventilated facade system and that's the timber framing. So if I just select this particular one, and as you can see here, we don't have to go and replace anything we can work with uh, existing placed objects. So I'll just go and change this to a timber color here. And as you can see here, we have the horizontal and the vertical timbers with the echo board behind the timbers. And if I just select that quickly and go back and turn on the insulation, and click on OK there. And you have full control over the distancing, the CC distances between the horizontal and vertical panels here. Sorry, the timbers I mean. So they're also interactively changeable. So what I'd like to do now is just quickly show the Vario D system. So the Vario D system is also a ventilated facade. So you can see that there's the different thicknesses here. We have the different uh, board types and we have the two different rendering thicknesses, the eight millimeter and the 10 millimeter. So if I go ahead and click okay, and we don't have the facade cladding, the, the facade cladding on at the moment. So what you're seeing here is the insulation boards, which is the Ignu cell in this case, which is a porous um, system as you can see here. So if we just go ahead and change the other one here. So you can see that we have the echo board in the background as well with the igneous cell there. And if we just quickly show it with the cladding system here, so with the render system. So this is a system where the rendering is actually rendered directly onto the igneous cell or the insulation in this instance. And as you can see, it's a, a glued system, so the uh, the cells are getting glued to the existing construction. So we're showing here a 300 millimeter thick insulation board here. Uh, we're not showing it graphically, but it is actually two separate boards. It's a 200 plus a 100. Uh, in the 200 system, it is a 200 board, but in the 300 system, it is a, a, a 200 millimeter board with a, a 100 millimeter board glued to it. 
and here's the uh, the finished facade. The functionality for the window and door sills is exactly the same in this particular system. And again, if we just quickly turn off the facade cladding here, you can see the insulation boards. So again, this system is totally free of charge. It's available for download via our app for Archicad. Uh, if you click on the, the cloud icon in our app, it's available if you search under the STO manufacturer. You can even find it in the manufacturer specific icons as well. Um, you can gain access directly to the STO objects. As you can see here, we have all of the links back to the respective documentation, back to technical descriptions, etc. So we're extremely happy with this latest development for the STO facade cladding system. Uh, these are also usable in high-end visualizations, as you can see here. So again, totally free of charge via bimobject.com and the manufacturer is STO. And the different systems that you can see here as well in, uh, in some high-end visualizations. So thank you for your time and we'll see you next time.